to your screen. Yeah, I'll just hide the thumbnails. So I'm I'm Dr. Jawad Bashir. I'm a consultant endocrinologist at Basildon University Hospital in the UK, and uh, I have the honor to speak on this topic, which is uh, diabetes in relation to COVID. Uh, this is a, a hot topic, as you know. We have been in this pandemic for about a year, and the discussion points that I want to raise from this meeting is number one, the effect of diabetes on COVID. And number two, the effect of COVID on diabetes. They are both interrelated to each other. As we all know, where did it all start? A year back, more than a year back, in a tiny province of China, Hubei, a place called Wuhan, was the one where the first few cases of COVID were reported. And from there onward, it spread like a pandemic throughout the world. And we were in a state of denial for at least a few months before we realized that this is a genuine pandemic and it does exist. And before anyone could take my years to actually uh, stop the spread of this lethal disease, it spread across the world in a matter of few months. And it takes me back about 1400 years back when our holy prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave a fantastic advice, which really kind of hits my heart that if you hear an outbreak of a plague in a land, do not enter it. And if the plague breaks out in a place while you are in it, do not leave that place. Such an amazing advice. This is from Sahih Bukhari. It's a, it's a genuine hadith and it's just an amazing advice about pandemics uh, 1400 years back when we had no idea about science and medicine. Now, because China was the first place where it all broke out, it makes sense that they would understand this condition more than anyone else because they have seen it uh, more than anyone and uh, they have had the longer, longer duration, longest duration of this condition. Hence, I'll start with a study quoted by um, uh, one of the Chinese uh, uh, scientists panel about the influence of diabetes on severity and fatality of COVID-19 infection. This is a recent article uh, published in a reputed journal of uh, diabetes, uh, obesity and metabolism with a, quite a high impact factor. And they did a meta-analysis on all the cases that were admitted in hospital with COVID and diabetes. And one of the interesting findings was that they, they, they almost unanimously showed that if you have diabetes and COVID, you have got three times more chances of dying. The fatality of COVID-19 infection was threefold if someone is suffering with diabetes. Now, what does this tell us? If you have COVID and diabetes, this is a lethal combination. Now, this is a lesson coming from uh, uh, observational data after about 12 to 18 months, uh, looking at cases from uh, observational studies. And uh, th this is what happens in pandemics. When you have a pandemic, majority of data comes from observational studies because we cannot run uh, lengthy randomized control trials. So let's have a look whether the same results are recapitulated in the UK. And uh, the, the, there's a, a recent study about mortality with COVID in England from March 2020 to May 2020, the first two months. And that's been done by a very reputed group of uh, endocrinologists. And uh, some of you who actually work in the UK as endocrinologists, you, you know certain names like Professor Parth Thakur. And I really appreciate these people working very hard just like all the doctors across the uh, globe, but they have done, they've gone an extra mile to, uh, to gather all the evidence and actually help us understand this lethal condition. What they did was they looked at all the admissions with COVID-19 in, in those first two months when the first wave of COVID-19 hit the UK. And they looked at the mortality rate per 100,000 persons. And one of the observations was that among the 23,000 deaths, 33% of people had diabetes. 
And this was a remarkable observation because one third of the people who died with COVID actually had diabetes. And they did another deep dive. The same team actually looked at it in more detail that what was the impact of diabetes on COVID-19 mortality. Now, if you look at the age breakdown, now the first two graphs at the bottom, as you, you may be able to see, so these are the people who have no diabetes and uh, then the overall population. If they grow older, the mortality, the deaths per 100,000 people is about 400 deaths per 100,000 people. But when they looked at the people who had diabetes, so this is the COVID mortality that we're looking at. So both type one and type two diabetes was associated with much higher mortality rate. Now the figures for type two diabetes are much more significant because we have got a bigger number, about 7,400 deaths. But that for type one was with fewer numbers. But again, the odds ratio are suggesting that you have two to three times higher chances of dying if you have diabetes and you get infected with COVID. Now this generated a lot of other observational studies as well. And the same team actually did another deep dive looking at the correlation with the severity of diabetes and, and, and the control of glycemic control. So what they started to do, they started to look at the weekly registration of deaths. So, so this is from 5th of January. The pandemic started in, um, in UK around the 13th week of uh, 2020. So, so around about by 20th of March, uh, we had the first uh, wave of pandemic hitting us hard. So if we look at the total deaths in 2020, they were not, they were not different from the mean deaths in the last three years. So the weekly death rate was more or less the same. So those, of, those people who actually don't believe that a, pan, a pandemic exists, th these figures are fairly remarkable findings because the death rate was not different until the pandemic hit. And just as the first few cases were reported, there was an outburst of deaths. And this outburst, again, they kind of broke it down. So this is only diabetes, people remember. So type 1 diabetes we're talking about. And if type 1 diabetes people's mortality rate was seen overall, if they didn't die with COVID, it remained more or less the same. But if they did have COVID, the mortality shot up quite hard. And the figures were far worse if you look at type 2. So the same thing for type 2 overall mortality and as soon as the pandemic hit, and you can see this is exponential rise because for type one, the figures here were in 300s, but now it is 6,000 deaths. And, and this is massive. So clearly diabetes and COVID is a lethal combination. And uh, this was something which, uh, w w which was fairly uh, new to us because we know people who have diabetes, they have got uh, risk of dying uh, due to other complications with diabetes. But why would COVID cause them to die uh, more frequently was something not understood. So another deep dive was done. And, and this was again, looking at all the deaths with type one and type two due to COVID and all other deaths of type one and type two diabetes. And it was interesting that both type one and type two diabetes people, if their HbA1c is higher than 75 millimoles per mole, which is 11% in the old money, they're more likely to die, whether they have type one or type two. So this is an independent risk factor for mortality with COVID-19. If the glycemic control is poor and you have diabetes and you are old, you're more likely to die with this condition. Now, further studies came to understand why, why do these people have worse outcomes? And as I said in the beginning that these pandemics, they are a steep learning curve for us. We cannot generate conclusions immediately from day one because we don't know what's happening. I hope we all survive this pandemic and this is probably the last one in our lives, but these pandemics generate evidence as the time goes by. So this study looked at the pathophysiology of 
COVID-19. So COVID-19, which is severe acute respiratory distress syndrome, happens as a result of coronavirus. It leads to damage to the beta cell. That's one of the possibilities. Whether it is due to thromboembolic state or is it due to uh, beta cell damage due to direct toxic effect of the virus, we don't know exactly. And we all know that they have a cytokine storm which leads to the sudden deterioration and uh, requirement of level three care. And that leads to a lot of other metabolic effects. So even at the time of admission, they may have hyperglycemia. If they have diabetes, they may have worsening metabolic control. They could get HHS. They could get diabetic ketoacidosis. And again, due to the insulin resistant plus insulin deplete state, we have seen a lot of new onset cases of diabetes, whether it's type one or type two. And, and you know, if someone has diabetes, particularly type two, they are having other problems like obesity, that's, uh, they, they have got inflammation going on, they have coagulopathy, they may have other complications of diabetes, the acute complications like DKA or hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state. They're generally older people, which isn't great. They may have cardiovascular risks or even renal disease, which doesn't help. So all these factors along with COVID and a state of insulin deficiency and insulin resistance leads to poor outcomes. And that kind of makes sense that these people do worse than general public. And there are a lot of hypotheses and theories around endothelial cell damage that diabetes causes. They, they can get strokes and kidney problem thrombosis. But one of the interesting observations is that we have seen more new diagnoses of type one diabetes in children during the COVID pandemic. And this is a small study from one of the Northwestern London hospital units that they notice that there were 30 new cases of type one diabetes reported during the period of COVID pandemic. This is an 80% increase in the incidence for that particular time period. And 70% of them presented with diabetic ketoacidosis. This generates a hypothesis that these people who have COVID-19 infection, number one, they either become insulin resistant or they have an insulin deplete state, which leads to diabetic ketoacidosis and the diagnosis of type one. Now, while we understood more about the COVID-19, the recovery trial was one of the few trials in the UK that showed some promising results with the use of dexamethasone. And it is being remarkably being used uh, for treatment of COVID-19 among people who are either requiring oxygen or they are requiring invasive ventilation. And this kaplan meier curve shows that the red graph is the mortality. So the mortality with use of dexamethasone is less if people are requiring oxygen. And same applies to the mortality with dexamethasone if they are on invasive ventilation. And the protocol here currently is to give six milligrams of oral dexamethasone for seven to 10 days to all patients who are requiring oxygen as a result of COVID-19 infection. This doesn't help diabetes as we know that dexamethasone is going to worsen the glycemic control and hence our role as endocrinologists becomes even more important to, to help people achieve euglycemia. So in summary, we know that one third of COVID-19 related deaths in the first wave were in people with diabetes. We also know that if people have diabetes and they get COVID, there's two to three times more chance that they would die as compared to a person who doesn't have diabetes. The worst the glycemic control, i.e. that the hemoglobin A1C is more than 11% or 75 millimoles per mole, the worst is going to be the outcome. COVID-19 induces a unique pathophysiological change, whether it is insulin resistance or insulin deficiency, we don't know, or it could be combination of both. Hence, we are seeing more cases with diabetic ketoacidosis, more cases with hyperglycemic hyper or smaller state, and more cases with new diagnosis of diabetes. And obviously with the use of glucocorticoid, we will have further challenges because the glucose control is going to get worse. 
this is a challenge. The advice is to stay at home, stay safe, maintain the advice that our Prophet Muhammad gave us 1400 years ago, not to go to a place where there is a pandemic and do not do mixing of people. Thank you very much.